the president of the Republic of South Africa. It's been a hundred days since Cyril Ramaphosa was inaugurated as the president of South Africa. Here's a look back at what he's done so far. Ramaphosa as president has attracted foreign investment. He struck an 850 million rand investment deal with the UK. The country's business confidence index rose 11 points to 45 in the first quarter of 2018, the highest in three years. He also appointed four investment envoys to draw $100 billion in investment. Eleven days after his inauguration, Ramaphosa reshuffled the cabinet. He removed ministers implicated in state capture and returned ministers who were fired by Jacob Zuma. But Ramaphosa faced criticism for retaining some who were considered incompetent or compromised in their previous roles. His announcement of David Mabuza as deputy president also did not excite the nation. Mabuza has been at the center of controversies. Ramaphosa also suspended Tom Moyani as SARS commissioner after his failure to act against allegations of graft by a senior official. That increase, changed by one percentage point to 15%, was implemented on April 1. The increase was the first in 25 years. New boards across a number of state-owned enterprises were approved by the cabinet under Ramaphosa. SOEs such as ESCOM and Transnet had under previous leadership reportedly signed billion rand deals with Gupta-linked companies, which had debilitated the state. The new board changes began the process of renewing standard of governance in these entities. In March, Ramaphosa launched the Youth Employment Service Initiative to empower the youth through paid work experience and seed funding. South Africa has a high unemployment rate. 3.3 million youths are not employed educated or trained. NPA boss Sean Abrahams reinstituted the 16 charges of corruption, money laundering and racketeering against Zuma. He had his first appearance in the Durban High Court in April. While many praised this act as a step to bring Zuma to book, Ramaphosa was criticized for failing to hold Abrahams accountable. Abrahams has been accused of being one of Zuma's puppets and still remains in office. On the day of Ramaphosa's swearing-in, the Hawks raided various properties linked to the Guptas. AJ Gupta was declared a fugitive, while some of the family's associates were arrested in connection to the controversial Fiada Dairy project. The ball on the state capture inquiry has also begun rolling. Deputy Chief Justice Raymond Zondo announced that they expect the first hearing to take place in August. Progress was made on land reform when a motion in Parliament was passed to consider a constitutional amendment that would allow the expropriation of land without compensation. The ANC has pushed the government to test Section 25 of the Constitution, which supposedly allows land expropriation without compensation. Policy on land reform has not yet been set in stone, and the debate around it has worried farmers and international investors. Northwest province erupted in violent protests, which called for Premier Supra Mahoma Pelo to step down. Mahoma Pelo has been accused of abusing state resources and is reported to have been linked to the Guptas. An interministerial task team headed by the minister in the presidency was sent to the province to directly address the issues. In the beginning, Mahoma Pelo refused to step down, but ultimately decided to leave his position by announcing his early retirement a few days before Ramaphosa's 100 days. While a lot has been achieved in 100 days, they have not been without their hurdles. Ramaphosa continues to face factionalism within the ANC, despite his call for unity. In KwaZulu-Natal, the ANC leadership is split between those supporting Ramaphosa and those backing Zuma. Some of the promises he made need more clarity, and some are taking time to be implemented. For instance, during his State of the Nation address, he vowed to downsize the cabinet. He has yet to do this. But while the reported failures and uncertainty may have started to put the brakes on the Ramaphoria train, many have given the President's report card a fairly good grading so far. Ramaphosa still has plenty to do before we can fully see the new dawn he has promised.